Hello everybody, this is Audrey Mack with GoTail Ministries. Uh, welcome into my office. I had it in my heart to, to share this message with you uh, as a part two of the album, The Violent Take It By Force. Uh, the part one was a message I preached in Colorado at The Healing Is Here. Um, you, and, and, and I just felt after this message that I needed to go a little further. Because you see, I have a lot of people that I believe in God for um, healing mostly or any promise. But when the promise doesn't seem to manifest quickly or immediately or after a little bit of time, they are very tempted to want to give up. They are discouraged and they wonder, what did I do wrong? Is it really God's will to heal or, or is it the will of God, period? And so I want to share that with you because I want to show you that, you know, as part of that violence, to take that promise by faith violently, to seize it because on the other side of the promise, there is an enemy that will do everything he can to stop you from getting a hold of that manifestation and of that promise. It will put pressure against you to convince you that you don't have it, that it's not the will of God, uh, that, uh, you know, X reasons. And to discourage you, to get you to give up, to quit, and to abandon. Amen. And so we, we find that Jesus was teaching this concept of perseverance, of endurance, of faith to his disciples. He gave them a parable that is found in Luke 18. Because in the verse 1, Jesus said, Oh, let me find my... He said in verse 1, He spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. And that word lose heart is the same word that means to quit, to abandon, or to stop, stop uh, uh, in, in the middle or halfway. And so uh, Jesus was teaching that faith doesn't quit. Faith doesn't lose heart and does not give up before the end or before the manifestation. And he was giving the example of a little widow who knew her rights. She knew what belonged to her and she approached an unjust judge and, and, and she approached him, her with that kind of attitude, like I would say the attitude of a bulldog that will not quit. And so Jesus said, listen to what the unjust judge is saying. And in verse 5, he said, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her unless by her continual coming she wearies me. Most people have translated this as to say, less by her continual begging, asking again and again and again and again. You see, that's where that notion of begging God and asking God as if God is not motivated, as if God has not already given to us what we need. I mean, that's what the Word of God says. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. It's done on the cross. Uh, Ephesians 1.3, um, that has blessed us, past tense, with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 1.3, has his divine power, has given to us, past tense, all things that pertains to life and godliness. You see, God has already blessed us, given everything to us, has already healed us, given us the healing in Christ Jesus. But now it is up to us to seize this, to take it, to receive it. Jesus says, whoever believes must believe that he receives. But I preach that message on spiritual violence because on the other side of the promise, there is an enemy that will do everything he can to stop you from receiving, from stop you from seeing the manifestation that will put pressure uh, against you. You see, we saw in Matthew eleven twelve, 12, he said, the kingdom of God suffers violence. By who? By the devil and his demons. He pushed, 
it puts pressure against you to convince you that it's not working, that you're not going to have it, that it's not the will of God, that God doesn't want you to have it, etc., etc. He's going to try to lie to you, to intimidate you, to slow down the manifestation in any way he can. That's why you and I have to be determined we have to be so convinced, persuaded that it is the will of God and we have to go and seize it. We have to be violent and take it by force. That's what um, Matthew eleven twelve says, the violent take it by force. And so as part of that violence, it is like that little widow, we have to have that perseverance, that I'm not going to quit attitude, because you see, that unjust judge knew that she was not going to quit. So he told himself, she's not going to quit. She's going to come. And you see, that continual coming, in Hebrew, it's, in Greek, it's the word, eistelos erkomai. It is not that coming back and forth. It means to come, to be set until the end. Or to come and to be set until the goal is reached. And so because the unjust judge knew that that little widow was not going to quit, so he said, well, I might as well give it to her. You know, I heard somebody say one time, if you are willing to stand forever, it's not going to take very long. If the devil knows that you've got that violent perseverance, that violent endurance, like that widow, that you will not quit until you see it and have it, he's going to say, well, like the unjust judge, lest she wearies me by her bulldog attitude, I'm going to give it to her now. And so you and I have to have that perseverance, that uh, tenacity. We have to have that endurance. And when we think of endurance, it has a an element of time to endure means to last for as long as it takes amen you see in roman 8 25 it says but if we hope for what we do not see then we eagerly wait for it with perseverance and you see that word perseverance is the word upomone and that word upomone means a cheerful, hopeful endurance, a constancy. Or the failure even says it's the characteristic of a man who is not moved or swerved from his deliberate purpose and goal. It's saying exactly the same thing, the continual coming. It's somebody who comes and is set until the end, until the goal is reached. Amen. And that even that word, wait, it is not a waiting while you roll your thumbs, a passive waiting, and that's what people think, that waiting is being passive. No, no. The word wait, it actually is the word ap apek dekomai, and it actually means to expect fully, you expect for it diligently with earnestness. And, it, and you see that perseverance is a little different from patience. Uh, because patience, it's, um, it's enduring the suffering and the affliction and the pain and, and, and the provocation of evil with a calm and unruffled temper. It means you don't lose your joy. You don't lose your calm. You don't lose your peace while you are being afflicted from the enemy. Amen. You stay in that. That's patience. But here is what perseverance actually means. It's a little different. It's another layer of endurance. Uh, uh, that perseverance in the Webster means to to persist in anything undertaken, to a continued pursuit of anything that has been begun with. Uh, 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 it, it's not passive. It's not waiting for the things to come. It is an active pursuit 
with expectation and because of expectation. You see, when you look in the Bible, all the people that received their healing, and you know, and I've talked about it in the first part of that, uh, of that message. I talked about all the people that with violence took their healing by force. You saw the woman with the issue of blood. She had that expectation. And because she expected to be healed, she said, or oh, her mouth spoke, if I can only touch him, I will be made whole. She had that expectation, but she had that tenacity and she did not give up. You know, she knew despite her discouragement because she'd lost all of her money. She spent everything with the doctor. Beside that, she had no strength, you know, uh, uh, because she lost blood for 12 years. Despite that, she knew that if people caught her in the, in the, in the crowd, the law did not permit her to be in public. She knew she was risking a, 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 to be stoned to death. And, and she would not give up, even though she was faith to a crowd that was stronger than her, that was bigger than her. A huge cry, but you see, she had that perseverance where despite all the roadblock and the obstacle, she would not give up. She went and persevered and endured until the end because she expected to be healed. Or oh, we see those four guys that were, you know, that carried her paralyzed. When they knocked at the door and they said they heard a no, you can get in. They did not take no for an answer. It was hard. It was not easy. It looked impossible. You know, most people would have said, well, it must not have been the will of God. No, 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 no. They knew that God is good, that his will is to heal all. You see? And so we see that right there, they went to the roof. They uncovered. I mean, I don't know how many tiles they took, straw, whatever. The roof was made of that in that time, in those days. But they found a way. They would not give up. That was a pursuit until the goal was reached. That was a I don't give up until the end. That was a perseverance uh, 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 until, you know, we get what we came for. You see, or we see blind Bartimaeus on the side of the road when he was faced with intimidation. He was faced with people that tried to shut his mouth to put him aside and stop him in his track. He would not give up. He didn't quit until he got what his heart desired. He screamed louder and he got Jesus' attention, didn't he? And so you see that, that those people they had that spiritual violence and it showed their perseverance, their endurance until the, re the, the goal was reached. It had that element of, of uh, 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 pushing against time, pushing against the obstacle, not taking no for an answer until the end. They would not quit. They would not lose heart. They would not give up. And you see, that's what you and I have to understand, that the enemy is going to try to beat you with a clock. He's trying to beat you with the, with the time to persuade you that it has not come yet because it's not going to come. But if you have that, like that widow, that tenacity in your heart and you make the decision not to give up, you see, I love it. You will see it come to pass. James, in the book of James, it talks to us about that element of perseverance in faith. It talks to us, you know, in James 5, 11, it talks about Job. You remember the book of Job? And let me, let me make a, a, a parenthesis. You know, it, that, the book of Job has been so misunderstood, so butchered. I have a whole teaching on that. You can go on my web... Um, I believe on my website, you know, gotellministry.org and in the media page, you can find the teaching on a PDF and, uh, and on an audio. Amen. And I probably soon will do a, a video with it. But in the book of Job, in James points out a, a what allowed, what helped Job to receive, to be blessed at the end and to overcome at the end. He said, look, 
Indeed, we count him blessed in verse 11, uh, who endure. You see that endurance. Here, James is talking about the endurance of faith. Uh, and he said, and you have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and full of mercy. Now, let me add this. The word intended by, it's in italic, uh, which means that it was added to the original text. It was not part of the, of the Greek. And therefore, because it gives us that, that notion that it is God who, who, who did that to Job, that God did it to Job for an intended purpose. Uh, to me, that's very sadistic, but it is not the case. Here, listen to it in the Message Bible. In James 5, 11, or the Amplified Bible, excuse me, it says, you know how we call those blessed who were steadfast, who endured till the end. You have heard of the endurance of Job, and you have seen the Lord's purpose and how he richly blessed him in the end, inasmuch as the Lord is full of compassion, tenderness, and mercy. You see, here it points out that it is uh, uh, that God is full of mercy, full of compassion, and God had a purpose in the end. Not uh, 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 it's it's not God that did that to Job, but when Job, when the enemy did that to Job, God turned it around, and he had a purpose at the end. He blessed him twice as much as what he had before. What the enemy took, God gave him twice as much and blessed him abundantly. Because we see that truth um, in Genesis chapter 50, verse 12, or 20, excuse me. Um, do you remember when Joseph, I mean, here's another example of one that endured, you know, just like Job who endured for, uh, nine months, the attacks, he lost everything. He lost his health, his riches, his family. He lost everything. Even his friends were persecuting him. And, 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 and so we see a man who endured and persevered and did not lose his faith until the end. And the same thing happened to Joseph. You see, Joseph was persecuted by his brothers. He was sold into slavery. He was thrown into a pit. Then he was thrown into a prison. Then he was forgotten. I mean, the poor guy uh, uh, went after one tribulation, after another tribulation, one attack after an attack. And many people think and believe that God did that to Joseph so that he could protect the nation of Israel. But listen to what Joseph says in Isaiah 50, verse 12. He says, but as for you, and he was talking to his brothers. He said, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people and save them alive. Amen. And, and, and I like in the, listen in the message, the same verse in the message, lest you miss it. It says, don't you see, that's Joseph speaking, you planned evil against me, but God used it, used the same plan for my good, as you see all around right now, life for many people. In other words, what Joseph was saying, what you meant for evil to destroy me, to kill me, God, he, 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 he turned it around for good, for my good, for the, the good of the people of Israel, and for his glory. You see, God has the amazing capacity to take whatever attack the devil throws at us. And God, if we are like Job or like Joseph, and we don't quit. We don't abandon our faith. God has the potential to take it around, turn it around for your good and for his glory and to bring many people into, the, into blessings and to encourage. Your, it, it can turn your test into a testimony. It can take your mess and make it and turn it into a message. 
Hallelujah. You see? Because, and here is the good news. While we persevere, not in passive endurance, not in submission to the devil, but with that violent endurance that I will not quit until I see the manifestation. If we have that attitude, it will develop character in us. It will um, fortify our faith. It will, and we'll end up being blessed twice as much as before. It will reveal, uh, uh, you see, even we see in Job, here is a great example. Because Job didn't quit in his faith, he did not abandon his faith, even though his, his wife said, oh, just curse God and die. I mean, what a wife. And he refused to give up his faith. He refused to deny God. He refused to accuse God and, 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 and he refused to abandon his faith. And you know, at the end, what happened? God revealed himself in such a great measure. It worked his character. I mean, it is char the character of Job was tested and, and proved true and strong. And he received twice as much as before, but he received, uh, uh, we see that that's when God revealed himself in such a great measure. His compassion, his tenderness, his faithfulness, his generosity. That's what James was talking about in James 5.11. He said, see the end intended by the Lord. When we don't give up our faith, like Jesus talked about in Luke 18, and he said, will I find that kind of faith on the earth when I come back? That's what God is looking for, a faith that will not deny him, that will not accuse him, a faith that will stand on the promise, on the word of God until the end, until it see the manifestation. And when we are like that, God reveals his, we know God more than ever before. We, we receive a revelation of God's goodness, his, revela his mercy and his compassion like never before. In James 5, in verse 11, in the Message Bible, he says, what a gift life is to those who stay the course. You've heard, of course, of Job's staying power. His staying power will not quit. And you know how God brought it all together for him at the end. That's because God cares right down to the last detail. I love that, don't you? That's who God is. He's full of mercy, full of compassion. And you know what will help you to stay the course? What will help you to persevere though the enemy attacks you? Is to realize just like what happened to Job. It was not against Job. The enemy had, it, it was not Job he was attacking. The devil was attacking God. He was attacking God's integrity. He was attacking God's heart, his character. He was attacking the kingdom of God. That's what the devil was after. And you see, today's the same thing. Any attack against you and I, is not a t it's not personal. It's an attack against God, against his word, his truth, and against the kingdom of God, against God's character. That's why you see people that, you know, that pray didn't get healed, they gave up, and you know they'll accuse God. And they said, yeah, God doesn't care, or that God doesn't heal, or, and then they get mad at God, they get angry at God. That should not be. You see, that means the devil has succeeded in attacking God's heart, integrity, and attacking the truth that God is good and healing is always the will of God. You see? And so once we understand that those attacks against you and I, it's not personal. Don't take it personally. But understand that it's an attack against God, His truth, His word, His integrity, and against the kingdom of God. Because your stand will affect others. Your stand will either be a mess or a message, you see? And, and, and so, once we, you see, that's what Jesus was talking about. 
in Matthew chapter 13, when he was teaching on the parable of the sower, Jesus was saying that there are different types of soil. Good, rocky, the wayside, there is rocky, hard heart, there is thorny, distracted heart, and there is the good heart. Those who have given themselves entirely to God and that have that tenacity, that conviction, that faith, that persuasion in their heart until the end. Amen. And Jesus was talking about, um, listen to what he was saying in verse 20 and 21. He says, but he who received the seed on stony places is he who hears the word and immediately he receives it with joy. Hallelujah. Yet he has no root or no depth in himself, but he endures only for a while. You see, that's why your faith must have endurance and perseverance. And he says, for he endures only for a while. Why? For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, not because of you, because of the word, immediately he stumbles or he gives up or he abandons and loses heart. What is Jesus explaining here is that the word, the truth that you receive will produce faith. And when the devil sees faith, that you are taking a stand on faith, a stand of faith, amen, against whatever it is, when he sees that, immediately he comes with an attack, with persecution, with tribulation. Why? Because he wants you to give up your faith. He wants you to abandon. He wants you to lose heart. He wants you to quit and give up on your faith. Hallelujah. Because he knows that if he can persuade you that it's not working, He's made a mess out of it. And you lose your message and your testimony. Amen. And you know what it will do? God will, not, will get no glory. Because it's through a testimony that God gets the glory. No testimony, no glory. And so you see the importance for you and I to understand that those attack against you. It's not personal. It's against the word. It's against faith. It's against the truth of the word of God. It's against the kingdom of God and against God himself. So you and I, when we stand on faith, we stand by faith, we've got to have that perseverance, that endurance, that I'm not going to give up. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the purpose of that attack that persecution is to make people sway and abandon what they believe it's to make people abandon their faith you know that's what the devil's trying to do with job so that he would quit curse god and abandon faith and it's on the bottom line it's really to mock god to say haha you see god your people don't believe in you they quit hallelujah i hope you see that how important it is for you and how to have patience, not to lose our calm, not to lose our peace, not to lose our joy when we get attacked, but also have that I will not quit an attitude, that perseverance, that endurance until the end. We and let me say something because the devil does not abandon, might not abandon. Um, right away. I have found it and it's been, you know, at the beginning when I started to really know faith and stand by faith and take a stand uh, against those attacks and the enemy sometime, the symptoms will know or the problem would not get less, they would get worse. What do you do when you are standing in faith and the symptoms or the problem becomes worse? You see, um, we have an example. We talked about, you know, the poor Job. That's what happened to him. He lost all of his family, but then it, it started again. And then it was his own body. And then it was something, I mean, it didn't stop. But we also have an example with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those three guys, you see, when they were faced to the intimidation of a king, 
which might I add, it was a symbol, a type of the enemy, of the devil. And so when they were commanded to bow down to the statue, to bow down to fear, to intimidation, to that false god, uh, what was the attitude? They said, King, we have no need to answer to you in this matter. In another word, we're not going to give you the time of the day. When they would not bow down to that intimidation and to that pressure of the enemy, do you know what the enemy did? He brought the fire seven times stronger. The fire went seven times more powerful, as if one time was not enough. You see, that's what the enemy will do sometime. Where you are, let's say you are believing for healing and you are taking your stand and you are focusing on Jesus and you are taking it by force and you are one day, one day, one week, one month and still nothing and you are tempted right there to want to give up, say it's not working, it's not happening. The temptation is to give up. And what will the enemy, if he see that you're still standing, you know, it's like he's going to put a little more pressure. He's going to increase the symptom. Things will get worse. Or the, whatever problem it is, it will, you know, all hell will break loose. You know what I mean? And, 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 and let me explain this. I remember, um, here is an example. I talked about it on the first message, but I want to talk about it because it's powerful. I remember one time, my husband and I were wanting to go scuba diving. And so I packed the bag, everything was ready. And so I put the suitcase to put it in the trunk. And as I lifted the suitcase, all of a sudden I did something to my back. I felt pain shoot from the bottom of my back to the top. And I could not bend, I could not breathe. It was excruciating pain. My husband came and he said, Audrey, we cannot go. And because I knew that it was the devil that was trying to steal from me, I took a stand. I said, no, I will not give up. And you know, um, I understand faith. So I said, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I am not going to lose heart. And so we went in the car. We drove to the south of Florida checked into a hotel, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm declaring, I'm praying, declaring the word, and I'm thinking in my head, well, tomorrow morning I'll wake up, it will be all, all gone. I woke up the next morning, it was worse. You know, my husband had to pull me out of the bed. Well, long story short, I ended up at the, the place where you rent the equipment, where we booked a, a scuba diving trip, and the guy looks at me thinking, are you sure you're going to go? And I'm like, I am, I have that endurance. I'm that tenacity. I'm not taking no for an answer. And I continue, continue. And all the time, the pain is there. I can't even breathe or talk. So I rent all the equipment. Here we are on the boat. I'm on the boat. Everybody's looking at me with big eyes thinking, what is she going to do? I mean, I was the attraction. I was the big joke on the boat, you know but I would not give up. I refused to give up. And you know, every time I had to put a piece of the equipment, it hurt. When I had to stand up with those tanks in my back that were very heavy, it hurt. When I had to stand on the side of the boat, it hurt. And my husband says, Audrey, are you sure? It is not safe, it's not wise. Are you sure you wanna do that? Jump in the water like this. And you see, everything was against me, the pressure. Even my husband really was telling me, Audrey, you're pretty crazy, but I refuse to quit. I refuse because I knew that if I don't quit, I don't lose. But you know, the moment I jumped in the water, I was willing to go till the end. No turning back. When I jumped in the water and my foot hit the water, all the pain was gone my back was totally free and I have not had that that kind of problem ever since and that's been 20 years amen and so you you see here that faith has to have that such a conviction that it will not quit until it see the manifestation no matter how long it takes but you see if the enemy that keeps on pushing and pressing sees that in your heart you are wavering, vacillating, doubting, 
then it's going to make the, 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 the fire a little hotter and a little hotter. It's going to make it a little hotter, a little hotter. But I'm here to tell you, don't quit. Look at the three Hebrew children. They would not quit. They said, I don't care. Even if you throw us in the fire, we're not going to quit. Even if you throw us, no matter how hot the fire is, we are not going to bow down. We are not going to give up. No matter what the cost, they went till the end. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. No matter what the cost, no matter what the outcome, they just, you, you don't give up. You don't quit. And, and in James 5, 8, I like that. James, remember what verse 11, he was talking, is saying, look at the perseverance of Job. But in the verse 8, he says, you also be patient. Establish your heart. And you see, in order to persevere till the end, that in order not to vacillate and doubt and shrink back and give up, you will have to establish your heart right at the beginning. That's what the Hebrew ch children did. They didn't wait until they were face to face with the furnace to decide that they were going to give up. They had decided long ago, just like Daniel. In Daniel 1.8, it says that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He purposed in his heart. They established their heart. What does it mean? That means that you decide the matter before the problem ever comes. It means that you decide if in, in the area of healing that you must decide in your heart that healing is always, 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 always the will of God. And to come to that conclusion, you got to have the word of God and stand on that word that that foundation is not shaking. That foundation is sure. You must have such a, 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 a strong belief in what God says in his word, that that's how you establish your heart. You know that you know that you know that you know that it is the will of God. Whatever it is you are standing for. You see, and, and, and you must believe and you must establish your heart. You must purpose in your heart before the problem arises. Amen. And at the beginning of your standing in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in order to strengthen, uh, to persevere, and you're going to have to strengthen your faith. You know, as from the moment you start standing until the manifestation, you keep strengthening your faith. And how do you do that? You have to strengthen your faith. You've got to persevere to endure, endure means to endure long, to endure until the end, not to give up, to see the full manifestation until the end, that means that you're going to have to strengthen your faith. And how do you do that? I love in Hebrew 11.11, 11, it says that Sarah received strength, for she considered God faithful. You see, in order to strengthen your faith in the promise of God, you first are going to have to have faith in God. That's what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty two, As he was teaching them to walk in authority, to receive the promises of God, and to walk in love, he told them, you are going to have to have faith in God or to have confidence in God to know God's goodness, his faithfulness, his kindness, his mercy, his compassion. You see, that's what we saw in James 5, 11. He said that all of a sudden, uh, 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 he, he, um, Job persevered and he saw, he had a revelation. And you know, he didn't have a Bible. Job didn't have a Bible to encourage him to strengthen his faith, but yet he persevered till the end. And at the end, he had a revelation of who God is. Faithful, merciful, full of compassion. Hallelujah.
And so you and I, I'm, I'm going to have to have faith in God. And like Sarah, we're going to have to strengthen our faith in God by considering God faithful. How do you consider God faithful? Well, the first thing you do by to, to consider God faithful is to um, remember everything that God has done for you. Remember your testimony, how God delivered you, how he saved you, how he healed you in the past, how he provided for you, the, the acts of kindness that God did, the little thing that he did for you, you know, the little smile, everything that God has done for you or others will reveal to you that God is faithful, he's constant, he does not change. And what he's done before, he does it today and he'll do it tomorrow because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what Sarah did. She considered God faithful. She reminded herself. Do you remember, Sarah, when you got out of your the land of Ur, Her, how God provided and guided us? You remember how God was so patient with us because we took all the family with us when God told us to only take us to inherit the promised land, but God waited. He was faithful. You remember uh, how in time of famine, God told us to sow, sow and God multiplied us and made us rich. Remember Sarah, when all of a sudden you ended up in the harem of, of the Pharaoh and God intervened supernaturally and delivered you? Because she remembered all of that, her faith was strengthened and she knew God is faithful and it helped her to persevere until the manifestation of the promise because do you remember God spoke to them made them a promise but it took years and years and years to see the fulfillment of the promise the manifestation of Isaac in their lives you see hallelujah and so that's what Jesus was saying have faith in God know that God is good he is love amen oh you see that's why Jesus came to show us who God is to reveal to us who God is because Jesus is God perfect expression perfect manifestation and that would add God Jesus is God perfect theology and you know what God's perfect theology Jesus Acts 10 38 how Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Amen. God was good. He heals all. But the devil is bad. He makes people sick. Or John 10, 10, Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life in abundance. But the devil come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Same theology. God is good. He comes to give us life and give us life in abundance. But the devil is a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's God theology. And when you know that, you know who God is and you don't doubt the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the compassion and the mercy of God, it will strengthen your faith and cause you to be able to persevere and to endure until the end. Like Job, like Sarah, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Daniel, and all the men and women of God, all those in the Bible that endured till the end because they would not give up, they would persevere, and they would endure with calm, with peace, with faith in God. Do you see? You must, that's the reason why you must see every attack like i say it's not an attack against you it's against the kingdom of god so you've got to change your perspective don't see it as personal see it as an affront against god and and and, and so that's one more reason to take a stand in faith until the end it's one more reason to persevere to endure until the end because the end of it will bring glory to God. See that tribulation, see that, that attack, see that persecution or that attack from the dead. See it not like a victim. Why, oh me, oh poor me. Don't be a victim. See it as an opportunity to glorify God. Because remember, it's an attack, an affront, affront against God, the truth, 
the word and the kingdom of God. See it as an opportunity to put the devil back in its place, to prove that you're a child of God and you mean business, that God is good just to glorify God, amen, and give the devil a black eye. You are a victor, not a victim, amen. And listen to what Roman chapter 5, verse 3 and 4 says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance, perseverance, character and character hope. And that hope is not a wishing and a hoping. It's a confident expectation or the desired result of the manifestation. You see what it's telling us here, that tribulation is an opportunity to glory. Count it in all joy when you encounter all kind of tribulation and persecution. For the end of it is glory to God. Oh, how, that's what happened. You see, when we choose to persevere, it builds not only character in us, it proves our faith strong and genuine like gold amen and when and, and you know that perseverance will involve self-denial self-sacrifice because you come to the place where it's not about me it's not about me it's about glorifying god it's about uh, uh, um, putting the devil back in its place it's about you know standing till the end amen and when we have that attitude that we're not gonna give up we, we're going to see the fourth man in the fire. We're going to see Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to get, get a greater revelation of God like never before. And we're going to get double for the trouble like Job. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, oh, I hope, I hope you have that, that you, you got that revelation, that faith. When Jesus says you must believe that you receive and you will have it. That that little four-letter word, will, means endurance and perseverance. And it could happen instantly. Like I said, if you're willing to stand forever, no matter what the cost, no matter how long it takes, it won't take very long. But if it takes long, if it costs you something, then you are willing to stand forever. And, and you will see. That at the end of that endurance and that perseverance, you will have the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. And oh, you'll be so blessed. So blessed. And so, Jesus says, you must believe that you receive it. And you will, with endurance and perseverance, receive it. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that this message was a blessing to you. But I want to pray for you right now in the next few minutes we have together because I just pray in Jesus' name for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, that the eyes of your heart be flooded with light, that you may know the hope of your calling, that you are called to, to faith. You are called to have that tenacious, that I will not quit, that bulldog faith that Jesus is looking for in Luke 18, 8. And I pray, Father, for their faith will not fail, that their faith will not give up. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you teach them, that you open the word to them, that that word will explode in their heart, that they will see, understand, and know and receive the promises of God. And that like that good ground, they will bear fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. I pray for a fruitful life, a fruitful heart, a heart full of faith. Because this is such that God is looking for. And God is not against you, he is for you. He is not trying to measure you up and try to disqualify you. He is there to help you to guide you, to correct you, and, and to lead you to the victory. If your faith is a little shaky, talk to Holy Spirit. He's going to show you, help you, coach you like a cheerleader. He's going to encourage you and show you how to pick it back up and endure, persevere until the end. 
God, I bless you, my friend. Let us know how you are doing. And visit our website at gotellministry.org. Subscribe to our YouTube page at Audrey Mack. And go to our Instagram, Audrey Mack Gotell, to our uh, Facebook page, like and follow. Hallelujah. And our Twitter, go to Audrey Mack. And um, we have so much more. Amen. That you can watch, listen, read to be a blessing to you so that your faith will not fail.